What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. In today's video, I'm going to show three top tricks for a collection list inside Webflow. So let's dive right in. We'll split CMS items into categories using only two collection lists. We'll split CMS nav links into drop downs using only one collection list. We'll automatically hide an entire events section when the events have ended. And finally, we'll use an option field to select item styles without using conditional visibility. For this first example, we want to split these items into different categories, but if we're using collection lists elsewhere on the page, we'll likely exceed that 20 lists per page limit. So to solve this, we're going to need to basically create a collection for our categories. And then we'll just add all those categories in. Then in the settings of the main items CMS, We'll need to go here and add a reference field and we'll title it choose a category. And then let's link it to the categories collection. And let's go ahead and apply a category to each item. And then next we'll add a collection list onto the page and let's link it to the categories collection. We'll select the item and give it a specific class of tr-contain, needs to have that class. And then we'll add any heading inside the item and get the text from the category name. And we need to give the heading a specific class of tr-title. Then we'll drag a div underneath the title and give it a class of tr-list. So inside the tr-contain, we have the tr-title and the tr-list. Now let's add another collection list under the first one. And let's set its source to the main items. We'll give the wrapper a class of tr-wrap. Let's give the list of class of tr-list. And then let's give the item a class of tr-item. Let's paste our card design inside the item. And then we'll go ahead and set the desired display settings on the actual list, which will affect the list inside the first collection as well. And then next we'll drag basically a paragraph text inside the card. And let's go ahead and get the text from the category name. And we need to give this a class of tr-category. So our code is basically going to find all the category text right here that are inside the tr-wrap. It's also going to find all the tr-titles that are inside the tr-contain. And then if the text content of the two matches, it'll add the item inside the corresponding list. So we can set the tr-category uh, to display none to hide it from the page. We can also get the tr-wrap and basically set that to display none as well because we won't need to actually see that part on the page. Um, so then I'll paste this code link in the description of this video, but let's copy it and let's paste it inside the closing body tag section under our page settings. And then let's just save and publish the site to see our changes. All the items have been split into the corresponding categories and we've only had to use two collection lists to do this. So if we actually want to change the order that these items are showing up, we can select the tr-wrap and set its sorting order to anything we want. In this case, we'll sort the items alphabetically by title. So basically on the live site, what we should see is the items will all appear in alphabetical order under each category. So we scroll through each category and you'll notice that each item inside the categories are sorted alphabetically. Let's look at another example of how we can use this. In this case, we want to have a static number of main links, but a dynamic number of sublinks. So first let's set the parent link class to tr-contain, and let's set the text inside to a class of tr-title. Now let's find the div inside the contain where we want our sublinks to be added and give it a class of tr-list. Next, let's create a collection for our sublinks. These will be CMS links to CMS pages, so we'll add a reference field. 
and let's link it to the, basically we're going to link it to the page collection. So they'll be able to select one of the pages. Uh, to select a drop down for each sublink goes under, let's add an option field and let's title it category. And the choices inside our option field need to exactly match the text of our main nav links. Then we can basically save this collection and add our sublinks in. Now let's basically add a collection list onto the page inside a symbol. That way we can place it on every page of the site. Um, we'll set its source basically to the nav links collection and we'll give the wrapper, basically it needs a class of tr-wrap. Uh, the list again will have a class of tr-list. And the item we're gonna need to give a class of tr-item. Now let's paste our cards inside the item and we'll pull the link um, basically from the selected collection page. And let's also get the text from the page name. And then we'll need to drag paragraph text inside the item. And let's get the text basically from that option field. So we know which drop down it goes under. Uh, give it a class of tr-category. And we can set its display to none again. We don't actually need to see it. And we can publish um, basically. And let's try and check this out on the live site. So each dropdown has some CSS, CMS nav links under it based on the option field that was selected. Uh, we can set the tr-wrap also to display none. We don't need to see it. To provide control over the sorting order of the links, let's add a number field in here in the CMS. Um, we can title it sorting order and allow decimals. Um, basically, we want to do that so that new items can be added in between existing items without having to renumber all of them. Um, and these will be sorted from smallest to largest number. Um, let's go ahead and just save this and we need to apply a number to each one of these links. All right, so with the wrapper selected, let's add a sort order based on that number field and sort it from smallest to largest number so the numbers can be applied infinitely. And let's go back to the publish site um, we'll notice that each one of the sublinks are appearing from smallest to largest number within each dropdown. So they're being sorted. In this example, we'll hide an event when it's over and we'll hide the entire section when there's no events. Let's start by adding a date field and let's title it start day. We'll need to add another date field and call it end day. And we'll make these required. And let's save our changes and let's uh, go back over to the page and limit the collection list to only show three items at a time and apply a sort order to the start date from oldest to newest so the events show up in chronological order. Then we'll apply a filter to the end date and set it to basically after or equal to zero days um, in the past. And let's save. So then from there, now if we move the last day of one of our events from today, uh, move it to yesterday, um, now it shouldn't show up because it's in the past. So we're only going to see events that are happening either today or sometime in the future. If we want the entire event section to disappear when no events are available, um, we'll need to add this code that I'll leave in the video description. And we'll just copy it and need to paste it inside the closing body tag section. And then all we need to do is give the item basically a class of CMS item. Again, no capital letters, no spaces. And then we'll give the section a class of CMS, CMS dash section. And now let's, um, let's archive our events and just to test it out, see if it works. So if we archive these and then we can save, let's go over to the publish site. Um, so now this entire section basically doesn't appear 
um, because we have no events in this section. In this last example, what we want to do is basically style all these collection items based on a drop down field in the CMS. So if we go over to our collection and we look at all these items, which are called sections, uh, we need to add an option field and we'll call it select style. So basically the, the client will be able to select the style. All of these need to have no capital letters, no spaces. So we'll have image dash or text dash only, image dash only, and then reverse dash order. Save, the field will be optional. And then we need to apply one of these styles to each one of the items. Um, so we'll make sure to give each one of these items a different style just to test it out. All right, and we can save that. All right, so now we need a way to know what the style that was selected was. So if we drag an embed onto the page and just add a div in here, um, then we're going to give that div a class. And then we're going to set the class equal to a dynamic field called select style. So whatever that class is, that style they selected, text only, image only, it's going to pull up. Now we need to apply a class to the parent called reverse if the class inside the div is reverse order. It's just going to use Flexbox to switch the order. So we can actually basically use the wizardry builder, jQuery builder that I created. We need this to happen on page load. And our target class is basically going to be this reverse dash order. So we're looking for that class inside the div that's in the CMS dropdown. Um, it's inside this div, so we'll get the parent, which is the entire item of that. And then we want to add a class to that parent. The class we want to add is the one we created in Webflow called reverse. So we can just copy all this and come back over to our page settings, paste it in the closing body tag page section there and save. And then let's just publish and test it out on the live site. So only one of them has that class or reverse order. So you'll see only that middle one is reversed and the other two are still normal. Um, so now let's take this a step further. We know that we also have a class in there um, basically for, I want to say image only and text only. So this is our text only. If we add that class um, to this, we're centering lining it. We're adding some radius, extra padding, changing the flex box and then we're just hiding the image. So basically this time, instead of adding the class to the parent, which is the whole item, we have these two divs inside that we need to add this class of text only to. So this one, we're basically on page load again. We're looking for a class of text only. Any item that has that class of text only, we're gonna grab the container. Then we're looking for a child inside the container, which is the item media this time. And we wanna add a class to it of text only and that's basically just going to hide it. Now, if we add another one here, um, this time we want to target the, um, the copy block here. So we're going to make target that child copy block. And we still want to add the same class of text only. And we're basically going to use that combo class in Webflow to style it however we want. Um, and we'll paste this in here. Really the advantage of this is it helps with page load time because you're not having to hide entire blocks of content with conditional visibility. Um, you're just changing the style of them by adding classes. And you're not having two sets of each headings inside. Um, so let's refresh. All right, so now we basically have the regular setup or reverse and a text only block right here. Um, and then added those classes for us. Um, so we have one more to do, which is the image only. Basically, we want to add that class of image only to this. And then we want to add the class of image only to the photo as well. And that'll make it full width. Um, and we can adjust that class on different breakpoints too, to style each one responsibly, independently. In our jQuery builder, we're looking for a class of image only that's inside of that custom embed. We're going to grab the parent of that, which is the container. And then we're going to grab the child. And then we're going to set those children to have a combo class of image only. So let's go ahead and copy that and let's paste it inside our closing body tag section. Just add it as another line of code and let's save and we'll remove those classes again. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and publish and check it out on the live site. So if we refresh, now we have a full width image, we have a reversed order, and then we have a text only block. 
So the client can come back and change these at any time just from that drop down. So if they go to this one and we just don't select an option, that's going to change it from the reverse style back to the normal style. So the order will, will just switch like that. Um, so we can set any of these orders styles using the drop down. I hope you've enjoyed this video. In next week's video, I'm going to do a Webflow development review of two to three projects. So I'll look through them and explain what was done well, what could be improved, and give some tips for how to improve that. If you're interested in submitting your project for next week's video, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Tim Ricks. I'll put the link in the description and then send me a DM of your Webflow share link. If your project is selected, I'll be sure to reply back and message you before the video next week. I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.